it's gonna get interesting when there can be some really weird spots when let's say he jams and then one of the bigger stacks call but like since his bounty is really big let's say um sam greenwood comes along <laughs> He's, he's not risking a lot, like, so if he jumps, I think he's going to get it in with sevens, eights. Um, I really hope it's going to be forwarded to me. Oh my f***ing god. Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back. I haven't been doing it for a long time, recording my session and commentating live. Um, that's my goal for today. So I'll be recording my early game, um, probably around two hours, three hours. And then in the mid game, I intend to take a break, not recording, because then the table count increases. Uh, I'm usually playing around 20 tables. And then depending on how many deep runs I have, then I started recording again. So yeah, I played the session yesterday and I have to apologize here towards the end when I actually had two deep runs. Uh, after a break, I forgot to hit the record button and I kept commentating, but you haven't missed that much, but just in case you wonder that there's a big gap, but I try to share as much as possible with you guys. So see that as a little Christmas gift from, from our community, from Raise Your Edge. And yeah, I really wanted to focus on explaining my thoughts, which was really good because I didn't need to pay attention to the chat. I can just focus on every single table. I don't need to mess around with the setup. And you know, I'm a stream pro. Uh, and so that was uh, pleasant for me. So I can really focus on the tables and explaining my thoughts. And I hope this helps you and is valuable to you. And if you really enjoy that, type of content then i would really appreciate if you if you support this channel you know liking and subscribing it really helps growing the channel and that's my goal i want to grow this channel to a fucking billion subscribers um so we can help as many people as possible make poker more popular and bigger sorry for torturing you but there's one last thing you might have missed it i launched my own youtube channel ben cb uh, where i talk about mindset health and business um which basically covers all topics around self-improvement even though i'm not a big fan of this word it's too generic it's very easy to hide behind self-improvement it's nothing really tangible or measurable however i'm sharing concepts that um, i consider as overrated other concepts that i found extremely powerful that has helped me to become very successful in poker to build my business to live very healthy and how to combine it which routines has helped me and yeah just basically talking from my own experience and you will also see that uh, there are more shorter videos i want to keep it very practical giving you tips and advice uh, again stuff that has helped me that i really can take for talk from my own experience and experience from my students or partners or uh, people that i have met that went a similar journey i know poker can be a lonely journey i know that sometimes we get overwhelmed confused we doubt things we doubt ourselves maybe we're a little anxious we don't really know where to go and yeah i'm just sharing a lot of things that have helped me to become mentally strong to keep believing in myself and push through this journey to become better every day and ultimately now playing the highest stakes so if you would enjoy consuming that kind of content just feel, just check it out feel free uh, maybe you enjoy it and now it's time to jump into the session and yeah, uh, have some big sweats together and yeah, just enjoy it. So I'm going to just fall bet. I definitely want to fall bet here. And in the PKO, I'm also going broke. Um, since I forbid relatively large, uh, I think calling is quite strong and the queen is always really bad. Like he has ace queens, king queens in his range. Um, if I go for a bet, I often have to bear this combo simply because we block uh, ace queen and king queen and we block some trapped over pairs. 
and I'm just gonna forward. And going for a check to the river. He checks flop, checks turn. I can even go for a larger overbet, I think. Uh, simply because any 8, any 10, probably even a strong 5 can uh, go for large bets there against his overcard heavy range. <clears throat> Set CB has returned. Gavin, yeah, and we are gonna call it with a seven off down here. Then we're gonna start with bet. <clears throat> and turn I'm gonna keep betting I also make it relatively large um, probably not happening so much in GTO but I think the way people play River. I'm still gonna bet. Especially the 10 because I think he has all the ace 10s in his range. Um. And like ace queen, ace king, ace jack with one heart. Yeah, he probably has. Of course, also the he has the. Um, all the ace and hearts. So this is spot where it's super hard to bluff. So we have a very easy forward there with our uh, set. And of course we love to see the three bet with aces. So you question now, four bet looks really strong. Um, I think people are gonna be on average strong on this board. And uh, not on this board, in this spot simply because yeah, we have Marisman on the gun, our range is relatively tight. Um, this looks really weird. Sizing. It's quite strong to me. Not sure. He's using a very awkward flop sizing. Question is, are we jamming? I think if he has a king, he's just gonna be shoving. Unless he has something like king 10. Uh, yeah, seven, six, okay. All right, that's a, that's a really bad three bet. <coughs> Against under the gun, we're just gonna be calling. Um, unless someone three bets, but that's not the case. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, 
Eights and nines are pretty bad. I mean, a lot of his bluffs contain an eight or nine. You know, something like king nine suited, ace nine suited, jack nine, ten nine suited, nine eight suited. So, um, which are legitimate bluffs here from the later positions. So, I'm just gonna forward. Like, if I jam, he's not gonna be calling knights, right? So, or sevens. So, it doesn't matter if you jam nines, eights, or pocket fours. But if I think this guy is out of line, I would start shoving. Deuces, threes, fours, five, fours, fours and fives. I would then fold those eights and nines types of hands. And then, of course, tens at some point, I think, is just too strong. Um, or tens, yeah. Even tens is close. So this is very important when your hand doesn't really matter if you get caught in terms of these pocket pairs. Because he's not going to be calling anything that you you have dominated when you have pocket eights, but when it blocks a major part of his bluffs, then it's a very terrible forward jam. Yeah, I'm definitely going to value raise here from the big blind. He's playing a. Forty percent V pip. Mm. Not the greatest board. We don't need a lot of protection. Uh, if he checks back and we have a safe run out, we can put in a lot of money later on. Ah, uh, he can. We, we're still ahead against this ace, deuce, and hearts that he might be limping. Maybe he overvalues queen x. I'm definitely not going to be folding flop or turn. Queen Jack definitely possible. Queen Jack suited. suited. <clears throat> if he jumps river, it gets pretty nasty. Like if you have a 40% VPIP. Yeah, you have a lot of crap in your range. Um, yeah, I'm gonna call I'm going to lead the turn. I'm not so afraid of so many. Yeah. He... Okay. <laughs> um... <sighs> Do we have a block? He just has all the ace kings. That's the <coughs> problem with one club. He got something like ace jack one club. Um... So I just don't think it's, I think we just have a give up here. I don't think we should be value betting or just a very unfortunate run out. It's also hard to have a lot of natural bluffs. He essentially, like if he has ace, king and hearts, you know, like just a top pair trying to get me off my two pairs and sets, which I think people won't do. So I'm just gonna forward. Kinda sucks, but it's important to make those disciplines, discipline forwards in these spots. We get aces in this one again. <clears throat> And our squeeze definitely looks super strong. There's also a spot, depending on the players, that you could definitely do a lot of bluffing. 
um, and some players you know who have their king 10 suited and can't really forward yeah you also don't need to do a lot of bluffing there A uh, good hand to check back with. Expect a lot of leads on turns and there gotta be a lot of rivers where I'm going to be bluff catching. It's just so easy to over bluff this river. Jack nine, Jack seven, six nine, spade draws. Um, we block six five now. Yeah, I think we have to call. He can easily have a ten and eight or flush. Um, but I just don't see how we get away from this. We have so many overcards. We have all the nut flush draws all, all, ourselves. So. We block two pairs. Yeah. If he would have bet, he would have folded, but that's not how you how you can how you can see. Uh ten nine suited here, I think that's an excellent spot to squeeze from the small blind. Almost six times. I'm definitely going to protection bet against the hand like king queen and king jack and diamonds. Also, sometimes helps us when we, you know, when the turn is a nine, that we also have some trips in our range. And we still have some short on big against sevens and eights. Uh, we just check it down. Queen's interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. Definitely makes some sense. 400 bigs just to call it. But again, it's it's not mandatory to squeeze there. So of course in, in high roller tournaments, I here and there, loosey goosey also want to mix in some bluffs. I don't know how many times I've hit aces or kings in this tournament. I'm, I have no idea why, how I can still be at uh, and even ace king at so little chips. <laughs> All right. I take it. I mean, if Timoth Timothy jams, <laughs> uh, it gets very dicey. Like, I mean, he's jamming ace king, probably some ace queens. He's jamming drags queens. Is Timothy falling queens there never? So. <clears throat> okay, now we have to ex starting stats, starting stack. Sometimes you just gotta uh, complain a little bit. I know a lot of you guys struggle a bit when to choose the or when and what sizing to choose in, in different spots, and I think it's just it's just very elemental to always ask yourself the same question. What am I trying to accomplish? What am I trying to fold out? What am I trying to keep in his range? 
and then I think you also better in you get better over time in in re at the beginning it's 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 an effort consciously to always think about okay what am i doing here what am i doing there what am i supposed to do and but then over time you will recognize these spots and either you do it during your in your session or you do it afterwards yeah i'm just gonna call it again price is just too good Ah, uh, feed jams, we have an easy fold with eights. Yeah. You either do it during your session um, that you reduce your table count when you say, okay, I really want to focus on internalizing my understanding of choosing a proper bed sizing, or you do it in a review, right? And it's the same question over and over again. What am I trying to accomplish? Um, what parts Am I trying to target? Am I trying to get value? I bet big. Am I just trying to protect my hand? I bet small. Am I trying to um, get some value, but also expand his calling range? Uh, so he continues calling with second pairs and third pairs that I would otherwise fold out. So I bet small um, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> ha, huh. interesting. I know Paul can be out of line in these spots. But I just think that this guy is not going to jam often enough. Uh, it's all right. It's a, it's a good outcome. <clears throat> and especially for me and it, it really has, it has really helped to just with my friends when talking about hands we were always asking ourselves okay we used bed sizing a or bed sizing b or bed sizing c what is our reasoning behind it you want to target a specific part in his range? Do we want to make him forward better hands? I also have to say here that a lot of people are making it bigger than it actually is. Um, the topic or topics around bed sizing, like it's not that there's such a huge difference in, in EV. Let's say if you see bet two third or if you see bet one third. And one of the biggest leaks I see is when people explain their thoughts about what sizing to choose. For whatever reason, they usually focus more on, oh yeah, I think my opponent is going to do X, or I think my opponent is perceiving me like this and that. You know, very subjective reasoning that has nothing to do with choosing the proper bet sizing at least unless you have like a sick meta game going on and you know that you can induce him with certain sizings but most of the time um that's not the case so be careful with that and just try to analyze it more from, okay, what am I really trying to accomplish? Over and over and over again.
yeah, playing this hand as a as a reshuffle against David, very likely also going to be committed against uh, San Martino. <clears throat> no, that's just unfortunate. Oh, that's very fortunate. I'm very sorry, David. GG, my friend. And I think it's very important that when you're not feeling it for whatever reason, that you're not trying to suppress it. You know, like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm here, I'm there. And I say, like, oh, fuck it, you know, I'm not feeling it right now. Let's see what happens. Let's try to bring it back. I think when you try to resist it, usually it gets worse. So just, you know, it's, it's all right. Sometimes we have days where for whatever reason, we're not 100% there yet. And <clears throat> just accepting the fact that you will have these days and just zooming out, seeing yourself that you're not hundred percent there yet, and usually that also makes it easier. It's it's nothing it's nothing bad. Like it's not that you should don't be too hard on yourself. I feel like some people are just trying to be always, you know, perfectionist and <clears throat> they always have to be there with an absolute A-game. Yes, of course we're trying to do that, but when it happens, you know, just accept, alright. It's not It's not going so well right now mentally. Alright. We try to fight our way back. Um, do I just want to jam? I think I just want to jam. There are a lot of high equity draws. Like if this guy has, like one of these guys has an ace high flush draw, I think they're going to be calling. Even against my overbet jam. Because we have perceived weaker draws. I'm only afraid of Miguel. Okay, he folds. That's good. That's very good. I really don't mind just taking it down right now. I mean, we basically doubled our stack uncontested. Yeah. Could some... Yeah. Perfect. But I think there's nothing what he can do there. I mean, I will have weaker draws, combo draws. Three betting here, the Jack-10. Um, yeah, call once. And this would be a good hand if, let's say, the river would be a fourth diamond to turn it into bluff to get to get him off like king, queen, and spades, ace, queen. And uh, yeah, he will have some bluffs that he's giving up. So, oh, interesting. I, I think this is a misplay in my opinion like no offense or anything but just my personal opinion and i know some people would disagree but i'm trying to share that as open as possible because it's a good hand that illustrates how how often people are not getting as much value as they're supposed to uh first of all i think it's not a good call three uh, pre-flop like jack 10 suit is the only hand that like even against my queen jacks that I'm three betting, he's dominating, and then I will have a lot of king queens and uh, all these sort of hands. So I think he just just wants to, you know, put in as much money as possible there on the river. I mean, not not as much as possible, but like I'm not really betting a lot there, like. Okay, I have an overpair, I'm, I'm betting myself, but I'm also calling. If I have... I don't have a lot of bluffs because I'm not three betting a lot of offsuited combos. And even if I have something like ace jack, ace king with one diamond, I would very likely start betting the flop. And also, I have showdown value against some of his weaker draws, right? So, Yes, here and there I will have a bluff, but I think the amount of times where I'm going to be checking back my weak queen, um, my 10x, maybe even aces without the diamond, I think he's just losing uh, too much value in these spots. That's where people see ghosts under the bed and like, oh my god, it's a monotone board.
Like it's not a horrible th call preflop, but but like I'm three betting ace ten suited very frequently. I'm three betting king ten suited very frequently. I'm having tens plus, and I think I in these spots it's it's so much better to call like six five or seven six suited simply because of the card remove effects. And then yeah. Because queen 10 suited very often, you know, when I have kings, his outs are going to be heavily blocked. And also here, I'm just raising a little over 3x. Um, if I have ace jack, ace queen, I'll more like check back, but I think we can get value from um, a lot of king highs. Didn't raise, he snap cards. I'm just gonna protect again. I think it was an insane timing tell there by him. It very likely doesn't make a lot of sense to second barrel there, but I just. I think it's very less likely that he has something, so then I can just go ahead and protect my hand. <clears throat> anymore. I'm gonna be raising here, and also he could have ace, flat, ace high flash draws. Um, I'm gonna raise here my monster draw and get it in. Oh, that's the card you want to see, huh? Yeah, I think I'm just going to jam. No need to slow play. Like, I think this guy is just always checking back. Wow, wow, they, they're calling this flop race without, we were free rolling so hard, insane. Uh, good river here, I see bet big on the flop, see bet big on the turn. So I'm just gonna jam. Bluffs. King Queen, one diamond, Queen 10, one diamond, King 10, one diamond. Uh, Ace Queen suited here, Bounty. Uh, they all cover me, so I'm just gonna shove. Um, just see too many Ace Jack cards here. And they're also supposed to call wider, so. Nothing you can do against Ace King. <clears throat> and ninth, we are going to open and yeah, easy call. Yeah, good shot by him. And we hold, wow. Um, don't really want to flat this hand and then play it four way, five way. I think here 30, 35 big blinds. We're only seven handed, so Jack's probably just it's going in. Yeah. 
that flip is inevitable. Just gonna call, play in position. Like literally having zero, zero bluffs here in this spot against him. And a good spot to jam here. I'm just gonna call it on. This guy is crazy as fuck, I'm telling you. We double up with the king drag, uh, with the threes against king drag. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, this spots, everything gets there. And a block jack 10, queen 10, which sucks, prefer having king 9, so I'm just gonna fold this one. Just a really bad run out. Good spot to reshove here with our ace deuce. He's still gonna have some race forwards. Not with jacks. <laughs> oh, 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 Getting lucky again. Uh, ace jack off is just gonna be race forward here. Um, there's still quite some ICM since there are three, four shorter stacks, but on the flip side, we're the short stack with a very small bounty. So they have no incentive to go after us. The guys to our right, I, I, f I think they're just, you know, um, if this guy jams, I think we have to call, um, just hoping to run against eights and nines because his bounty is, I already had to calculate earlier around 25,000 in ships. Um, hmm. The, with the bounty, it always makes things so much more interesting. I mean, 30k in the pot, 50k behind. I'm thinking to just jam, to be honest. Like, he's gonna call a lot of jack x. We represent a lot of ace queens, ace kings. Yeah, can't be too bad with a bounty. If he has something like 10-9 off with the 9 in clubs, I don't think he's folding. We're flipping for a bounty. <clears throat> and now, even if we make him fold queen 9 in hearts, which is calling against the small sizing. And we can do a bunch of shoving here. <clears throat> Let's hope to get, in, get some action here. Oh. And we just call. Um, apart from ace queen, I don't think he's going to be three betting a lot of like queen jacks type of hands. So yeah, this is just a spot where. I won't be folding. <clears throat> I mean, ace queen is definitely possible, but we block it heavily. <clears throat> I also think that kings would check at some point. So like, it's either a random goofy queen four suited type of hand, but like, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to call down if he jams. Half pot, I mean, we're gonna look into it. A6 off. You're not representing a lot there, my friend. I see by the flop, we turn the absolute nizzles and we still have it.
but it's also um, hard to have a lot of uh, is 10. I actually think that, yeah. Hmm. But also, yeah, we have queen 10. He blocks queen, or he blocks queen 10, but like he also blocks pretty much all of my bluffs. So I think it's much better to call there with just a naked ace five and hearts <coughs> or just as a uh, ace uh, lower a6 hands i would believe tens might be interesting here Oh, actually, we lost a player and left. <laughs> oh, yeah, we of course call. Good job by him. And sevens here yeah, against the three X. Okay, I'm gonna be a bit more careful against the three X. I believe it's it's more often a hand like tens, nines, jacks, queens. Still ace king. So let's see what he's up to. Alright. Uh ace track off. Shoving is not really printing a lot, so I'm just gonna go for a race and then decide. <coughs> like shoving with round 15 big blinds from like hijack, low jack on final tables when there are a bunch of shorter stacks. It's just not so profitable. I'm gonna go for a small bet. I think he's just he's still having enough and not still a lot of um, immediate check faults. Checkback would be totally reasonable as well. But a lot of his hands, like 10, 5, and diamonds, gonna pick up equity on any 7, 8, so just with a small sizing, trying to protect my hand. But tens, we are certainly going. It's gonna get interesting when. There, there can be some really weird spots when, let's say, he jams and then one of the bigger stacks call, but like. Since this bounty is really big, let's say um, Sam Greenwood comes along, like <laughs> he's he's not risking a lot. Like so, if he jumps, I think he's gonna get it in with sevens, eights. Um, I really hope it's going to be forwarded to me. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> But I think he's also shoving a lot of lower pairs. And I actually think that he's still over calling. I, I'm gonna call. Like, he shoves, what is he shoving? Like fives plus, sixes plus, broadways. He might be min raising aces, kings, queens with a certain frequency. Um, I don't know which button I actually just pushed. In a freeze out, I would fold. In a freeze out, I would fold. Um, I would start considering jacks. But I think here with his bounty being so big, we're sending it. Yeah, it's good that he overcourts. All right, ace track. <clears throat> That's a good outcome. Like in terms of EV, but... And also... Just a 10 ball. Nope. And at least we finished before him. So we got 7th for $8,600. No bounties, unfortunately. But it's just how it is. I have a really annoying spot here. Um, he's basically wrapping a nine or I think I'm gonna fold. 
Um, I, I think this bot is just heavily under bluffed. Like, if he has a bluff, we have a lot of perceived ace highs, king highs, so I think I'm just gonna fold against this big bet here. <clears throat> I think it's a very greedy size against over pairs. He probably perceives me to always catch there with an over pair. We got one more final table to go, so nothing is nothing is lost. Queen to off. Let's see if something happened. Okay, we are con um, committed against the big blind if you us. If he don't jams, uh, we we'll just set them all in. <laughs> With the gut shot, we are. <laughs> and actually, we were ahead. It's. Hmm, I don't. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure. It's like the bottom and higher hand. Um, is he getting us to fold better hands with king highs? Yeah, it could be. Like, if we have king deuce and hearts, yeah, I probably want to just don't jump myself this hand. And then king high flush draws or an eight or a jack, just checking. Sometimes jamming a jack, otherwise your jamming range becomes too weak, of course. Yeah, so... So basically, I forgot to hit record again, I apologize. We busted the one final table, we're back with this one, and I had to say, I hate to say it, but you've missed a lot of action here, as we can see. Uh, we're down to four players, and this all happened within um, within literally 30 to 45 minutes. Um, I already had the feeling that the players are very aggressive, um, and I was just playing very tight leaning back just letting do their thing and as we can see they were just uh yeah playing very aggressive and we're down to four hand net which is just insane i also lost uh 25 big blinds all in tens against against this guy and nines against tens then had an 11 big blind all in small reverse button with king queen against ace eight suited that we lost I'm gonna go for 3-bit here. We haven't been so active yet. Now the ICM gets less. I mean, we just have to... What does T do? Oh my god, this spot is so weird. This spot is so weird. Am I just calling? Please jump, please jump, please jump. Just... Like... What is he doing? Like it, the trap of the trap of the year. This guy is super tight. I have a very bad feeling about this. <clears throat> I really want to see what they have. Oh, uh, guys, I apologize so much. Ah, uh, that I forgot to hit the record. I, I actually thought I hit record and then I look in OBS, it's not recording. What the fuck? What is. Oh my god, that smells like a trap so much. King's aces. checks it oh, maybe it has something like king queen diamonds but i mean he has like six big blinds right preflop so seven big blinds <laughs> oh david left it though Drag. oh my god we saved ourselves i think I haven't I have missed a bit the action. <laughs> Snap call. Oh no race. What's going on guys? You have boats. You're boated up. 
Oh, please don't do it. You guys have been so aggressive all the time. <clears throat> Just jam. Just jam it in. All right. <laughs> as I as I said, jam it in, jam it in. Of course, he's going to jam it in. Definitely interesting. Tell that he min raises aces, and we need a king. Ooh. No, it's a spade. GG, GG with this one. Uh, for 16k. I hope you guys still enjoyed the ride. I apologize again for having missed a lot of the action. Um. But I was essentially just leaning back and watching them busting left and right. So it was not that there were super deep, interesting spots. Um, but yeah, of course, now I, all the other tables, I'm just going to, um, they're all day two tournaments. So I'll try to get into day two. And then I hope you guys enjoyed it. Drop your questions in the comments. And yeah, see you guys. Next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.